Hi everyone, I'm Father Mark, pastor of St. Paul's in Bellevue, Florida. When Jesus was up on the mountain in the story of the Transfiguration, he was sitting with Moses and Elijah, the lawgiver and the greatest prophet. And he was in, in consultation with them. And this uh, consultation more than likely had to, had to be a preparation for the upcoming crucifixion. We know that Jesus would be betrayed and he would be jailed and he would be tortured and, and executed as the price he would pay for our salvation. But these two figures from history who are sitting with Christ um, show us that there truly is life after death as Moses had died and that God is a God uh, of the living. That's hard concept sometimes for folks. You know, we just take it for granted that Moses was there, but Moses walked the earth 1,500 years before Christ was ever born. So it's, uh, it's an amazing um, power that God has and that he can make anything happen at any time. And Jesus is just sitting with these two, as a matter of fact, and they're having this conversation. On the last mountain that Jesus would be on before his crucifixion, because when he comes down off this mountain, you know, he tells everyone not to, you know, don't speak of what just happened here. I forbid it. Even though they did, they still, they still open their mouths. It was too huge of, a, of an event for them to just keep their mouths shut. And, but Jesus comes off this mountain on the way, now prepared for that, for that crucifixion. I mean, we'll see him in the garden talking to God, if there's any other way, but not my will, but thy will be done to his father. But it is on this mountain that, that Jesus, who is the law and who fulfills prophecy, all prophecy, sits with human beings and gathers intel. And we realize that he truly is one of us while he's doing this. He is absolutely divine in his nature, but his nature is dual because he is also human. So this God man comes down from this mountain prepared for his march into Jerusalem, which is a bittersweet one. We celebrate it on Palm Sunday, knowing full well what was ahead of him, what had to be done. And that encouragement did come from Moses and Elijah saying, you have to be strong at this time. You are the Messiah, you are the one. They were, they were reaffirming who Jesus truly was. And what an amazing team, what an amazing partnership Moses and Elijah had in that moment that James, Peter, and John witnessed saying, hey, should we build tents for, for an overnight? They got to see this. And, and as the story talks about Jesus in his own transfiguration and his clothes becoming a dazzling white um, and his glow about him, which is like a glimpse at the glorified Christ, the, the message is, is a bit more because we see Jesus connected to the Old Testament here. Remember, the New Testament had not yet even been written by anyone. There's just the Old Testament the scripture, the prophets, the laws. So the bulk of all of this is sitting there with Christ, who is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. He becomes the new covenant as he comes down off that mountain on his way to that amazing glory, which will be his in the resurrection. But what he has to go through to get there is remarkably, insanely hard but only he could actually carry that all the way through, knowing full well what lied ahead of him. And this is how God sends his son to us out of his love. Today is no longer the day to, to hide that fact that Jesus was with Moses and Elijah. Let everyone know that he spent that time with them. Let everyone know that God needs to be glorified in our lives. Let everyone know that we can truly trust Jesus who did not leave that course, that journey that he was on for our salvation. What an amazing event. 
I just love that we have that experience in our scripture for us to, to look at and to read, to understand, and to talk about. Another beautiful idea of the gospel for us to pray over, meditate, and follow. In Christ's name, amen.